Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today, I want to cover a technique called pixel stretching. Now, I came across this technique because I was watching a video on a Photoshop tutorial on how to do this. And at first, it looked really arduous, and I thought to myself, I don't really even know of a way that this can be done in PaintShop Pro in any reasonable kind of way. Um, but what I did realize is that writing a quick Python script to do the exact thing that I'm trying to do uh, wouldn't be that hard. So what I'm going to show is how we can prep an image a certain way so that we can run a script, which I'll provide a link for that you can download and run, and it should make this whole process of trying to create an image like this a lot easier. So let's get to it. So to start off, we have to uh, get an image set up such that it, everything but the subject is transparent. So what I'm going to do is start with this image of a dancer that I got from Pexels, and then I'm going to promote the background layer and then add a new roster layer underneath. And the reason to do this is because when we use the background eraser to isolate this guy, we need to make sure that that edge, um, that line right up against his body or whatnot is as clean as possible, which you'll see as I'm using the background eraser that it takes a few passes in the same area to get all the little artifacts out of there. And it's super important to doing that. So by adding the black background, it just makes it really easy to see as I'm erasing uh, to make sure that those edges are as clean and as tight as possible. So we're gonna speed this up a little bit uh, and just get past this stage so that we can get to um, where it really matters. Now, one thing I'll explain though, while this is going on is that the goal of what we're trying to do is be able to sample, if you will, the last pixel, the last non-transparent pixel on one side of the image and then create the bands or the stripes of color off of that. So that's why it's going to be really important um, to make this as tight as possible because we want all of the pixels, for example, on the right side of his body uh, to have only the colors that really we care about, like the colors of the skin, the colors of the jeans, um, and his sweater and all of that kind of stuff. You can see in some cases I, I use a larger brush size um, and make even more passes just to try to get that cut out as tight as possible. So once we have a pretty good outline around him, we can use the lasso selection tool uh, to draw within that space and then invert the selection and delete it all so that all we're left with is just the dancer, cleanly cut out, and no background whatsoever. Now if we zoom in, what we'll see is that there's still a bit of a halo around him, and this is going to be a problem because if I'm going to sample the last pixel on the side to figure out what I want the bands of color to be, I don't want them to be all white just because there's traces of the background still showing. But what we can do is use the magic wand, and make sure that the match mode is set to opacity since we erased all of it, and make sure there's no feathering, and then click into the black region. And when we do that, we'll get a selection around the dancer, but we can modify that selection to basically cut out that halo region. So in this case, since I have the background selected, I can expand the selection, adjust the number of pixels till it's right where I want it to be, hit OK, and then delete, and then what we'll see is it cuts all that region out. It's going to create a pretty harsh transition between the subject and the background, but at a high resolution image like this, it's not going to be that noticeable from far away. So here we have nice clean edges where the last pixels around the outside are exactly the colors that we're gonna wanna sample when we create the bands. So now to export this image to use in our script, We'll want to turn off the black background, and we'll also want to crop it because a smaller image is going to run faster in the script than a really large image. So we'll try to keep only the pixels we need, and then we'll export it as a PNG. And this completes the step of preparing the image for feeding into our Python script. So at this stage, I presume that most folks have not used Python or don't know anything about it. And really all it is, is, is it's a script interpreter. So you can write code and it'll allow you to execute some instructions like loading an image, 
looking and modify looking at and modifying pixels and then re-exporting that image uh, as a PNG. Python scripting can do a whole lot more, but um, that's what we're going to focus on because it's quick and it's simple. So you'll want to go to python.org uh, to download the interpreter script. And so if you go to their page and scroll to where it says download, the latest version as of the making of this video is 3.8. And then you can scroll down and under the file section, you'll want to find what your operating system is, whether it's Mac or Windows, and whether it's 64-bit or 32-bit based. Um, select the right one. Usually the executable installers are, are easier to use because you just run them like you would any other software installer. When you click on it, then you can save it to a folder, like a downloads folder. And then once you run that installer, it'll take, just follow the instructions and then you'll have Python installed on your computer. Now, the next thing you'll wanna do is bring up a command window and you can either do this by clicking on your Windows start button and typing CMD or doing the run command and typing CMD or if there's any other ways you know to bring up a command prompt, go ahead and do that and then it doesn't matter what directory you start in, but if you type the word Python in there and hit enter, then if your Python is installed correctly, you should see some type of printout like this you see here. And, and again, um, Python 3.8 is the one that I had. So that puts you in a Python mode, but we don't need to be in the Python mode. So you can just type quit with the open and close parentheses, and that should put you back into the regular command prompt sort of mode. Now, to run the script that I created, you're going to need to install one library, and it's very simple to do at this stage. If you simply type the command pip install image.io, uh, then that will automatically start a download and installation process of that library. In my case, in the video, since I had it already installed, it's telling me it's already there, so it's not gonna do anything. But in your case, if you don't have it, it should start the process of downloading and installing. If it doesn't, you may have to look up some documentation to see what kind of problems you may be running into. Hopefully not. So then at this stage, your entire environment is ready to run Python script. So now if you go to the other link, this will take you to GitHub. And what you'll see from that link is a page that looks like this that has a in a table a .git ignore file and a pixel stretch.py file. So you want to click on the pixelstretch.py link. And from here, you can actually see what the script does. You can see all the commands, and you can see exactly what it's doing, and you can see how not sophisticated it is and how simple this whole concept of what we're trying to do actually is. But barring that, you can click on the raw uh, button on the top, but you need to right-click it so that you can say save target as. And then you'll want to find a location somewhere on your computer that you want to save it so you know where to find it afterward. So once you navigate to your folder and click save, now you will have that file on your computer. And in Chrome, you can at least click on the download menu and then say show in folder. And then you'll have a Windows Explorer window with your PyScript there. So then next, what you want to do is copy that PNG that we exported that had the transparency of the dancer into that folder. And to run the script on the image, you can either drag it into the script and it'll automatically run. And when it does, you should see a command prompt window with this kind of information on it. And it should produce a pixel stretch.png. And what you'll notice is it's all those perfect bands that are colored based off of the last pixel on the farthest side to the right of the image. Now, if for whatever reason dragging doesn't work, you can go into the navigation bar and type CMD and that will open up a command prompt with or in that folder location already set. So then if we demonstrate this again, we can delete our outputted pixel stretch.png, but instead in the command prompt, we can type Python pixel stretch.py, the script, and then the name of the file we want to pass in. And what you'll notice is what shows up on the command prompt is the same set of outputs as when we dragged the image in. And then that pixel stretch.png got generated as well. So if one method doesn't work, give the other method a try. Okay, so now that we have our band, our created band image, we can come back to PaintShop Pro, back to safety and familiarity, 
and um, open up, or if you had never closed it, um, the starting project that had the separate dancer with the transparency on one layer and the black on the bottom in another layer. And we can do a little bit of prep before we bring the band image in. Like I'm going to just change the background to a more interesting color than black. But then we can simply drag that band image into the scene. And what you can see pretty quickly is that those bands correlate very closely to the last pixel on the right side of the dancer's body. So now we can just position it um, since we're going to have it kind of tracing in the direction to the right. Make sure the top and bottom is lined up just right. And next what we can do just to give the framing of the image a little bit um, better dimensions, we can increase or add a little bit of margin on the right side just so that we get more of that band showing through and it's not just like a square image. And then we can just take an eraser and erase the left sides of the banded image uh, um, rel relative to the dancer's body so that it appears more like the band is really coming off of as a product of the dancer rather than it just being behind him. And I'm not doing anything fancy here, it's just a regular eraser, just very loosely getting rid of the parts that I don't really care too much about. This can also be done with masks if you want to be less destructive. And then to mimic kind of some other examples that I've seen, I'm going to use layer properties and add a drop shadow that's very subtly just, you know, somewhat mimicking the lighting that's on the dancer himself. It just creates some separation between him and the banding image. And then finally, just to give the background a little bit of more uh, interest, uh, just going to add a slight vignette to darken the corners. And this is a material that I've already created and I use very often, and it's just a gradient material that is black that fades into full transparency. And that's it. Some important things to note in this particular demo, I had the banding coming off of the right side of the image of the dancer. The way this Python script runs, it's always going to take the pixels that are on the right. Essentially, it's looking for the last non-transparent pixel on the right side of any row, and that's what it's going to use as its reference for the band. Now, you might say, well, what if I want the bands to go in a different direction? Just to keep the script simple, I didn't want to add any like input from the user and having to do all that stuff, but place more of the control in PaintShop Pro. So really, if you wanted to do the banding, say, on the left side of the character, you'd want to rotate him 180 degrees. He'll be upside down, but when you feed him into the Python script, it'll create the banding off of the other side of the dancer rather than his backside. It would be the front side. And you could do the top or the bottom or pretty much any angle you want. You'll just have to readjust the location of the banding relative to the dancer and composite all of that in PaintShop Pro. But the script is always going to look for the right side. So that's it. I totally get that working with Python, Python scripts can seem a little bit daunting or working with scripting in general can seem a little daunting. Um, you know, some of these techniques that I'm going to show definitely are going to push people out of their comfort zone. So. Hopefully this is doing that, but in a good way, and it's helping you to expand your capability. Like I said, even when I looked at Photoshop tutorials on how to do this, they seem pretty involved and it would take a lot of work. But as you can see in this example, the script makes it real easy as long as you do your transparency um, erasing correctly and, and are really meticulous about it. This example is pretty simple. I may do some experimentation to see how we can actually add a little bit more dynamics to the banding itself, like maybe make it, you know, twist and curve and stuff like that. But um, be forewarned, it's most likely going to be something that's done in Blender and not in PaintShop Pro, as I'm not aware of any way that you can really mesh warp um, well these kinds of things in PaintShop Pro. So we'll see. But the goal will be to try to make this a little bit more interesting. Just keep a lookout for that video. And as always, uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you're interested in more material that I'm producing, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.